Six years ago, Anna Walsh and her husband Brian welcomed their first baby into the world, and it was a little boy. Two years after that, another boy would follow, and with yet another pregnancy, two years later, the trifecta would be complete. Three baby boys, all under the age of four. But those little boys, now two, four, and six, have not laid eyes on their mother for two weeks. They have not had a hug or a snuggle. And they haven't seen their father since a week ago today because that, he's sitting in jail, accused of lying to the police about where he was in the hours after their mommy vanished. He is not an official suspect in Anna's disappearance yet. And Anna's disappearance is not a murder yet. But usually when we report on tragedies like this, little kids are swept up into the loving arms of their grandparents or their uncles or their aunties. And it is a different story for the Walsh boys. Anna Walsh's family is from Serbia, so there are some complications there. Brian Walsh is an only child, so no aunts, no uncles there. His father died in 2018. His mother is alive, but she's become part of the investigation since trash bags from a dumpster uh, right around her home contained blood, a carpet, a hacksaw, and a hatchet. So where are those three little boys supposed to go? For now, they're in the custody of the state of Massachusetts. And at such a young age, it is impossible to imagine what those babies are going through with no family member anywhere in sight. No kiss goodnight from somebody you trust and love and know. Joining me now to sort through what happens in a process like this is Darby Fox. She's a child and adolescent family therapist. Darby, I got a couple of things I want to ask you about the process and then the emotions of, of this all for little, little guys, right? First, let's talk about the process. What does it mean when we hear at this early stage they are in state custody? What kind of state custody? What kind of bed? What kind of mommy figure? So that's a great question, Ashley, and we can't totally answer that. But what we want to keep our mind on is the state custody means they have to take over and have the actual responsibility of having these kids. They could be in a home. They could be in a specialized foster home where the parents have gone through trauma therapy training and they are used to taking something like this. We just don't know. And it makes sense from a legal perspective that, especially with this investigation still going on and the grandmother now involved or the paternal grandmother now involved at some level, that legally the only people that can be held responsible for these kids is the state of Massachusetts. So it doesn't necessarily mean they're in a bad place or in a bad home, but it means the state is protecting them and they will make the decisions on what happens to the children. Okay, the big question everybody has when they see all these pictures have all three little boys in them, right? There's rarely a picture without all three of those little guys. Look at them. They're so cute. They even dress the same. Uh, please tell me they don't get split up, especially in these early days. Just they, they would keep all three together because they are the only family now that they have. They will make every effort to keep all three together. That is uh, all family law is based on that. Um, anytime you go into a foster care system or any kind of custody custody like this the um research tells us family law tells us we try to keep them all together and with some kind of biological attachment so the only time they might get separated is if there is a care need like a disability or some special need that is too much for one family to take or if there isn't a family that can take all three. And sometimes states are overwhelmed and don't have someone who can take all three. I didn't want to hear that. That was what I was hoping you weren't going to say. I, something tells me that there are going to be so many people who come forward. We've already heard of three neighbors and friends who've, who've made an application to um, DCFS. Here's a weird question, and I don't, I don't want it to sound shallow, but little kids don't know the difference between shallow and, and what they just deserve, right? But they right. look like they come from a pretty fancy household. They look like they come from lots of money. Um, you know, Grandpa had a Salvador Dali. So can the state figure out a way to, to get them into an environment that's kind of close to the, you know, the, the lifestyle in which they've become accustomed, or is that sort of out the door? That's really out the door unless one of the foster families that matches up has the is 
is a family of means, like you say, with the background. Um, they will certainly try when they assess them to put them with a, someone that is first priority will be handling three kids in trauma. That would be the first priority. And the means doesn't come into play really as a as a first choice to be honest. Yeah. The, the, the trauma is a whole other kettle of fish, right? This will be lifelong, uh, especially for the six-year-old who really knows a lot more than the, the four and certainly than the two-year-old. Darby, oh gosh, I wish we were talking under different circumstances. It's nice yeah. to see you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Darby Fox joined. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.